Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to read and understand frequency tables. Specifically for our examples, we will take a look at an example with ungrouped data, so an ungrouped frequency table. That will be our first example. And then we will look at an example with grouped data, so a grouped frequency table. Now, as far as frequency tables, they are a way for us to represent and display data in an organized and easier to understand way. Frequency tables show us the number of times something occurs in a data set. And that something can be a value, a range of values, even something that's non-numerical. So it doesn't have to be numbers. Whatever the case may be, we are looking at the frequency, the number of times something occurs. Let's jump into our first example, and this is going to be our ungrouped example, where we are going to take a look at a frequency table that is displaying this data right here. These numbers represent the number of extracurricular activities a group of high school students are involved in. So things like sports, theater, band, any clubs, basically any after-school activities, so a lot of possibilities. Now, a certain number of students were surveyed at a high school to take a look at student involvement. These are the results. This is the data as it was collected. It has not been organized. This is called raw data. As you can see, this is pretty difficult to interpret and understand as is. A frequency table will help us organize everything, and our table is right here to the left. Now, the left column of the table, so this column right here, represents the number of extracurriculars joined. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. As far as how I determined which numbers to put there, I just went from the smallest number in value in the data set, so zero, to the greatest number in value, five. Now this is considered ungrouped data because we have individual values in this column, not groups or ranges. You'll see what I mean by groups, grouped data, when we get to that example. You'll see the difference. And then on the right side, the right column, right here, we have the frequency, the number of times those values show up within the data. So looking at the table, let's read this table here. How many students aren't in any extracurricular activities? So zero extracurriculars. We look right here, number joined, zero, there are four students. So four students aren't in any extracurriculars. How about one? Well, there are eight students in one extracurricular activity. How about two? Well, 10 students. Three, there are 16 students. Four, there are nine students. And then five, there are three students. So you can see that this frequency table really helps organize and present the data in a meaningful and easier to understand way than to look at the raw data. Now let's answer some questions regarding the data. Starting with number one, where we have how many students are in three extracurriculars? Well, three extracurriculars joined, there are 16 students. So 16 students that are in three extracurriculars. Let's move on to number two. How many students were surveyed? So we need to figure out how many total students were surveyed. We do this by looking at the frequency column and adding all of those numbers up. So four students plus eight students plus 10 students plus 16 students plus nine students plus three students. So the total is going to equal, well, four plus eight is 12, plus 10 is 22, plus 16 is 38, plus nine is 47, plus three 
is 50. So 50 students were surveyed. Lastly, let's move on to number three, where we have how many students are in more than two extracurriculars. So two is not included here. We need more than two. So we need to look at three, four, and five. Well, 16 plus nine is 25, plus three is 28. So 28 students are in more than two extracurriculars. So there is our ungrouped example. Let's move on to our grouped example. Now we will take a look at grouped data. So a grouped frequency table. Let's jump into our example where we are going to take a look at a frequency table that is displaying this data right here. These numbers represent the number of videos released last month by a group of content creators. So a certain number of creators were asked about the number of videos they released last month. These are the results. Now this is raw data. That just means that this is the data as it was collected. It's not organized at all. So you can see it's difficult to interpret as is. A frequency table will help us organize everything and our table is right here to the left. Now the left column of the table, so this column going down right here, that's the number of videos released. So we have one to five videos, six to 10 videos, 11 to 15 videos, 16 to 20 videos, and then 21 to 25 videos. Now these groups are called classes or class intervals. Since we have these classes, these groups, this is called grouped data. So these are the groups right here in the videos released column. If we have a wide range of data and a lot of individual values, using groups helps us create a more condensed and manageable table. Depending on the situation and the data, writing each individual value could create a very long table. For example, for this data, we would have to go from 1 to 23. That table would be pretty long. So think about if we had an even wider range and more individual values, maybe hundreds or even thousands of values. So these groups allow us to create a simpler and easier to work with table. Now, as far as the right column, so this column right here, this is the frequency, the number of times the values in our data show up within these groups. So for example, taking a look and reading this table, how many creators released one to five videos last month? Well, five creators. How about six to 10 videos? Well, nine creators. 11 to 15 videos, eight creators. 16 to 20 videos, two creators. And then 21 to 25 videos, one creator. So you can see that this frequency table really helps organize and present the data in a more meaningful and easier way to look at than just looking at the raw data. Now let's answer some questions regarding the data. Starting with number one, where we have how many creators were in the 16 to 20 range as far as videos released last month. Here is 16 to 20 right here. So we have two creators. Two creators released 16 to 20 videos last month. So they were in that range. Let's move on to number two, where we have how many total creators were included in the data? Well, for this, we need to take a look at the frequency column and add all of those numbers up. So we have five creators, nine creators, eight creators, two creators, and one creator. So if we add those up, that's going to give us the total amount of creators. Well, five plus nine is 14, plus eight is 22, 
plus two is 24, plus one gives us 25. So 25 total creators. And then lastly, let's move on to number three where we have how many creators released less than 11 videos? So less than 11, 11 is not included. So we are going to look right here. So the six to 10 and the one to five videos released. So we have five creators and nine creators. So five plus nine gives us 14 creators released less than 11 videos last month. So there you have it. There are the basics of reading and understanding ungrouped and grouped frequency tables. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.